Welcome, Professor Walmart. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, ma'am. We'll start the event within five minutes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much. I will wait, and uh, when it's coming by uh, time to present, uh, I will yes, be here. Thank okay. you. Mamit, I am here. Oh. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Sir, we'll start within five minutes. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Sansu Mangal Pe. Good afternoon, ma'am. Professor Joshi. Good afternoon, ma'am.
गुड आफ्टरनून सर अमृत हियर सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल हेलो डॉक्टर यस यस सर सर नाउ इट इज परफेक्ट आई एम फाइन हाउ आर यू सर बस बस चल रहा है ओके सर ओके सर प्रोफेसर a very warm welcome to all the distinguished guests colleagues and dear students to ipsc global women's breakfast powering diversity in science this event has been organized by the department of chemistry government general degree college shingur west bengal india in association with rani rashmani green university west bengal india and association of chemistry teachers here of homi bhaba center for science education of fundamental research mumbai in collaboration with international union of pure and applied chemistry upac we shall get to learn many a thing from the renowned scientists who who will comprise our speakers panel today such a program will definitely enrich students of both undergraduate and postgraduate courses research scholars and even the faculty members across the country today we have with us professor shantanu chakraborty sir principal government general degree college singur honorable professor ashutosh ghosh sir honorable vice chancellor of rani rashmani green university professor dv prabhu sir general secretary act professor brijesh pare sir president act today we also have professor theodora volmer from chalmers university of technology sweden and dr ani and dr adita joshi ma'am director sanskriti foundation new delhi india as resource persons who will enrich all of us by sharing their vast repertoire of knowledge the iupsc global women's breakfast is celebrated today two days prior to the united nations day of women and girls in science the theme for the 2021 event is empowering diversity in science goal 5 of the united nations sustainable development goals is achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls as quoted in the recent gender gap in science study and stated by the un gender equality is not only a fundamental human right but a necessary foundation for a peaceful prosperous and sustainable world the iupsc is in a unique position to serve as a leading organization and global platform where these issues can be easily addressed previous global women's breakfast events were organized by iupsc in the year 2011 2019 and 2020 and highlighted an ongoing need to build a network of both women and men working together to address the barriers and ino- and inequalities faced by the women in science this program has been conceived and conceptualized by Association of Chemistry Teachers (ACT), here of Homi Bhaba Center for Science Education (TIFR), all the faculty members of the Department of Chemistry, Government General Degree College, Shingur, and the Department of Chemistry of Rani Rashmani Green University. It is because of their relentless endeavor to make this program happen that we have been able to materialize it. Association of Chemistry Teachers endeavors to reach out to every student. with an aptitude for science and every teacher related to the world of chemistry and propagate the subject as a discipline and a topic of research act is a large family with teachers coming from all over india dedicated to the service of chemistry education i am sure 
that you will agree with me when I say one can go on and on listening to Professor Prabhusar when he speaks on any subject. The quality of such oratory comes from his genuine love for the subject and dedication as a teacher. He is continuously involved in increasing his knowledge in the subject and inspiring others to do the same. He is the pillar of ACT without which the entire structure will fall and crumble. Apart from being the most important administrative and academic support of ACT, Professor Prabhusar is also a pioneer who is constantly exploring new pedagogies to make chemistry more interesting and appealing to students and teachers alike. May I now invite our respected Professor D.V. Prabhusar to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Professor Amrit Mitra, for your very kind uh, introduction. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon to all the participants in the Global Women's Breakfast 2021. It is indeed a very happy moment for us that we are all participating in this global event where a large number of scientists and science students are participating from all over the world. There are more than 270 events which are going on today, out of which the largest number, that is 59, is from India alone. So it's indeed a matter of pride for all of us that so many scientists from India are participating in this event. I would like to first of all congratulate and thank Dr. Amrit Mitra, my very dear colleague, a very active member of our ACT for conceptualizing and organizing the Global Women's Breakfast. And I would like to also thank the Government General Degree College Bengur and the Green University of West Bengal for taking the initiative to organize this event. As we all know, the Global Women's Breakfast is a very unique institution. We started way back in 2011, but became very active since last year, that is 2019. It's, it aims at building a large network of people to address the issues of gender inequality in the science, which are faced by women and the less privileged sections of society. It is our aim and our objective to bring together people from all walks of life to take part in scientific activities. Association of Chemistry Teachers, as Dr. Mitra rightly said, has a very large network of members all over India. And uh, we are making a special effort to reach out to the smaller towns and the smaller regions where we are sure a lot of talent is there. The Global Women's Breakfast involves people from schools, high schools, colleges, universities, scientific organizations, and government who are all invited to take part in the event. Association of Chemistry Teachers is actively collaborating with IUPAC to organize the event in India. So far, we have been able to get 59 organizations to organize the breakfast events. This is indeed a tribute to all the chemistry educators in our country, whether they are students, they are teachers, they are scientists, they are administrators, policymakers, they are all there in this particular event. The Association of Chemistry Teachers started way back in 2000, and it is a registered national organization of chemistry teachers in India. And recognized by the government of India as the registered body of chemistry teachers in our country. 
since its inception in 2000 it has been in the forefront of promoting excellence in chemistry education through its national and international conferences symposia training workshops newsletter and competitions for school and college teachers the aim of today's global women's breakfast is empowering diversity in science means we are trying to bring together a diverse uh, population of people ladies gentlemen children all are to be involved in scientific activities i would like to invite all my teachers particularly the chemistry teachers to become a part of association of chemistry teachers and take part in our activities and we have just started a journal on science education which is published by gaurang publishers of mumbai the first issue is out i invite all of you to send your articles on science education i would like to wish all the participants in the global women's breakfast grand success particularly the women scientists we would like the women scientists to come forward and take a greater role play a greater role in scientific work i would now end my brief talk with best wishes for the global women's breakfast and may this be a continuing event in the years to come with more and more people taking part i wish the event grand success best of luck best of success thank you very much thank you dr mitra thank you sir thank you sir for the welcome address government general degree college shingur uh, is the youngest government college in the district of hugli affiliated to the university of badovan west bengal this college boasts of a dedicated and erudite faculty who strive to create a milieu in the college that is conducive to learning for students and teachers alike new academic projects scholarly discussions enrichment programs organizing social and cultural events constitute the annual activity calendar of the college each faculty member is actively attached to modern and many are engaged in projects with notable research organizations across the country with a view to merge culture and academics the college seeks to enlighten each student with knowledge beyond the ordinary students who have already graduated from this institution hold their alma mater in high regard not only because of what they have been able to learn but also because of what has made them into well balanced individuals spreading the next generation towards a glorious tomorrow government general degree college singur will continue to engender such pioneers for the society in the days to come the tireless efforts of our respected principal sir professor dr shantanu chakraborty ensured the smooth functioning of the entire college and involve all students in inquiry based learning so that they may be dissuaded from learning by road may i now invite professor dr shantanu chakraborty sir to say a few words thank you amrit our college the government general degree college shingur situated in hugli west bengal and indian association of chemistry teachers homi bhaba center for science and education tifr mumbai in association with rani rashmani green university a new university in the district of hugli west bengal welcome you to the global women's breakfast in collaboration with iupsc international union of pure and applied chemistry the theme of this program is empowering diversity in science today almost 270 global women's breakfast events from 63 countries are taking place all over the world we are highly honored to be a part of this big event our speakers today are professor teodora ratigan volmar head of nuclear chemistry and industrial material 
recycling energy and materials division chamers university of technology sweden and dr adita joshi director uh, director sanskriti foundation new delhi india and scientific consultant of csir unit csir iigb new delhi i would like to thank professor dr d b prabhu general secretary act and brijesh pare president act and professor ashutosh ghosh honorable vice chancellor of nani rashmani green university for extending their support for such a wonderful academic endeavor i would also like to thank the department of chemistry government general degree college chingur for taking such an initiative to organize an event in collaboration with the organization of international report like iupsc there are numerous students presently participating in this webinar as audience who i firmly believe will be enriched by listening to our honorable speakers today and also from the inputs given by several eminent personalities whom we have in our midst of in this afternoon i extend my best wishes to all of them thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much rani rashmani green university is a newly established university under the government of west bengal in the district of hugli india the diligent efforts of honorable vice chancellor sir professor ashutosh ghosh faculty members the support staff and the administrative body endeavor to kindle in the learners the spirit of inquiry thereby inspiring them to tread the path of research in the forthcoming years of their lives may i now invite our honorable professor ashutosh ghosh sir to say a few words for this event thank you amrit uh, good afternoon to all the participants on behalf of rani rashmani green university i welcome you all to the global women's breakfast an initiative of international union of pure and applied chemistry which is commonly known as iupsc in association with government general degree college singur hugli and indian association of chemistry teachers homi bhava center for science education by india this event is being organized today globally by several academic institution as you know the theme for the 2021 event is empowering diversity in science the global the goal of the united nations sustainable development is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls iupsc is in a unique position to serve as a leading organization and global platform where these issues can be addressed today we have with us professor teodora uh, retingan volmar head of nuclear chemistry and industrial uh, materials recycling energy and materials division chalmers university of technology gothenburg sweden and dr aditya joshi director sanskriti foundation new delhi and scientific consultant of csir ji sutra unit csir igib new delhi india rani rashmani green university is newly formed university which uh, started uh, its journey only only this year in the campus of government general degree college singur hugli the university is committed not only to value based quality education to students coming from various socio economic backgrounds across the state of west bengal but it also encourages and promotes sustainable development in everyday life paving the way for a cleaner healthier and safer planet the core objective of this virtual event is to provide a platform to the students academicians scientists for a fruitful scientific exchange with zero capital investment and also to develop their scientific aptitude i would like to thank professor dv prabhu general secretary act professor vijesh pare president act and dr shantanu chakraborty principal government 
General Degree College, Singur, and also, of course, Amrit for their initiative uh, and support. I wish grand success of this event. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you, sir. It is our immense pleasure to introduce Professor Brijesh Padesar. Alongside a mentor like Professor D.B. Prabhu, the members of ACT are extremely fortunate to be under the guidance of Professor Brijesh Padesar, the president of ACT. Words fall short to describe his magnificent administrative ability, his attitude towards creation of an ambient environment for the benefit of students, generating greater interest in the subject amongst the learners, handling the situations with optimism and shared dexterity is exemplary. It is our great honor to welcome Professor Brijesh Padesar to deliver the presidential address. Over to you, sir. Okay. Yeah, very uh, pleasant uh, afternoon. Yeah, Professor uh, D.V. Prabhu, General Secretary of Association of Chemistry Teachers, Dr. Amrit Mitra, who's an executive member, and uh, our guest today, uh, Tio Dora, if, from from Sweden. Yeah, so I I welcome yeah I welcome you all, and. <clears throat> It is really, really a great honor to be here. So it's a wonderful day. Of course, it's quite hectic, you know. But the global uh, women's breakfast program uh, that is being organized by IUPSC, uh, actually, it's a different uh, uh, than the previous years, you know, when 2019 and 2020, it was held, you know, in a, in a physical mode. Uh, but this year, you know, because of the pandemic, we are having it a uh, in a in a virtual mode. So anyway, uh, it's it's a great opportunity to have a, a guest like Theodore. Otherwise, it would have, it would not have been possible to have have her, you know, from uh, Sweden. So it, it's a great it's a great thing. I once again welcome you. So now, you know, after after having two very successful uh, global women's uh, breakfast program in 2019 and 2020, uh, the successful programs demonstrated the need to build a network of both women and men working together and to, to address the barriers and the inequalities faced by women in science. So definitely IUPSC has a unique position to serve as a, as a leading organization and global platform where these difficult and persistent issues can be addressed in a very, very transparent manner. And that's why we are here. So Global Women's Breakfast 2021, uh, we, are, we are just organizing it, I mean, we are, we are having it just two days before a very, very important day, and that is the United Nations Day of Women and Girls in Science. As all we know these days, you know, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 goals, and out of that, the goal number five says to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. So that is very important. Recently, I would like to mention uh, a survey made by United Nations and the report on, on gender gap in science. So the report says, the gist of the whole report says, gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, but a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. So really, if we need to have a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world, we, the gender equality has to have, we, we need to have it. IUPSC has invited for this program women and men from all types of educational and scientific organizations, from schools to colleges to universities to scientific societies, government and industry organizations. They are welcome to organize the breakfast events. So it could have either been a virtually or in person. But now, because of the corona situation, it is really advisable to have it in virtual mode. So we are doing it. IUPSC looks forward to encourage. Uh, each breakfast team to, to reach out and connect with the another team. That is what is happening. That is what we are in touch with Theodore, you know, like because she is also one of the organizers of this program in, in her country. And therefore, you know, now she is with us. And that is one of the purposes of doing this breakfast program in such a manner to have a networking. Uh, so I take this opportunity to thank the co-chair of uh, this program from IUPSC, Dr. Lara McConnell and Professor Mary Carson, those who have really 
meticulously designed the whole program and organizing it. My still being, being in the Association of Chemistry Teachers, I would like to say a few things about it. Uh, we are into 20 years of establishment of Association of Chemistry Teachers. And this was designed to serve as an apex national body of uh, chemistry educators to promote excellence in chemistry education. And the idea of formulating SAT was conceptualized by Homi Baba Center of Science Education in Mumbai. The association brings together on a common platform uh, various people, I mean, the teachers from school to colleges and universities and, and scientists from various uh, scientific institutes and researchers from industry. And just they together, you know, they are there to organize some subject related activities. And since its inception, SET has worked tirelessly to strengthen the chemistry education in India and to motivate students to pursue chemistry as a career. And we have with us, you know, our general secretary, Professor D.V. Prabhu, and those who have already been from the day one of this institute, and he has brought this institute to such an excellence and such a height. So we are really thankful to him. SET has been organizing chemistry Olympiad uh, for school students, which eventually lead to the formation of Indian chemistry Olympiad team, which takes part in the international chemistry Olympiad. We are doing many such programs. We are doing one concept test in chemistry, which is something very special uh, program for undergraduate students in India. It's getting popular every year now. Recently, you know, al although, you know, uh, there was a pandemic and it was a boon in disguise, you know, so SET has organized a research convention. And in that program, you know, we have organized um, various uh, uh, web workshop, you know, I would say, uh, on various titles like research problems and scientific writing, how to write a research paper, organic synthesis, centometry, instrumental method. This is all for uh, mostly for undergraduate, postgraduate students and for the research scholars also. SET annually gives away many awards, you know, for, for best chemistry teacher award, best woman chemistry teacher award, uh, SET chemistry popularization award because we uh, within SAT finds that to popularize chemistry among young students is a very important mandate with SAT, that is Association of Chemistry Teachers. SAT has been promoting various programs in collaboration with the Royal Society of Chemistry. Uh, recently, the Yusuf Hamid, the, the science teachers training program in India, we have been doing for science teachers in collaboration with RSC London. So uh, this is about SAT, this is about the, the programs and I should not speak much on that because we have the, the keynote speaker with us. So I just, uh, once again, I, I welcome uh, our guest, Theodore, who is the key speaker for today, and all other guests also. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Amrit Mitra, for giving this opportunity. And I wish you all the best. And now we are looking forward to listen to all our uh, speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for finding some time for us. Today is extremely hectic for you. Thank you, sir. It is our immense pleasure now to introduce Professor Teodora Volmer, ma'am. Professor Volmer, we welcome you to our country, India. Professor Volmer is presently the Professor in Nuclear Chemistry, Chalmers University, Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, Gothenburg, Sweden, and head of the group of Nuclear Chemistry and Industrial Materials Recycling. She is the visiting teaching fellow, Leeds University, UK. Professor Volmer's competence area Solvent extraction of metals as well as nuclear chemistry. Besides teaching, gender and equal rights issues has been another area where she has started official activities since 2015. Another area of her interest is networking and collaboration all over the world in projects related to her field of interest and acting as scientific reviewer for journals. She is the elected representative for academical union. COS for chemistry. She is the guest editor for journal Metal Switzerland. She, she is the expert evaluator for Latvian Council of Science, Latvia. Authority. Board member of the Swedish Nuclear and, Society. Guest editor, journal of radio, analytical, and nuclear chemistry. Stranger. factors which had been operating. She is an expert evaluator for a faculty position for University of Technology, Finland. A significant number of students have completed their doctoral and postdoctoral research under the supervision of Professor Volmer Madam. Most of her students have been placed in prestigious academic and industrial positions. May I now invite our respected speaker, Professor Volmer Ma'am, to deliver her presentation.
मैम यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल professor volban ma'am you are not audible no madam ओके मैम ओके मैम ओके मैम थैंक यू हेलो यस मैम नाउ इट इज ऑल परफेक्ट थैंक यू सो मच <laughs> I'm very sorry but it seems that the connection no, is No no problem ma'am no problem So thank you so much for inviting me today I'm very humbled to participate in such a big and and beautiful meeting you have here and I'm very grateful to professor uh, Bije Pave for inviting me and as well as professor Amrit Mitra I it's not my first time in India even if now it's just uh, online so I'm very happy to say that uh, I have been guest at prc uh, some years before and i am very happy that i had the occasion to to visit india in reality uh and i'm very grateful for a very nice presentation you made uh, i just wanted to say that yeah it sounded maybe uh, that i have done a lot and it is probably i have done a lot but i can say that i had a lot of people behind me which helped and encouraged me and just uh, curiosity coming from a country which um, we say that we are quite advanced is i'm the first professor in nuclear chemistry in the country's history so we have never had a woman before as a professor and uh, i'm very happy also to be the first uh, head a woman uh, first head of my group and my group is started in 1953 so it's quite a while um i'm very happy to start the presentation to show a little bit what have happened this morning in in Chamash because we also have had our uh, group organized uh, for for uh, today's uh, UPAC initiative and also i would like to show you a little bit what we have done at Chamash to encourage the inclusion of women in in our um, all, all areas of expertise i would say so allow me to uh, start my screen presentation now let's see if it works can you see anything is it possible to see anything yes ma'am it is perfect good thank you very much so Here you can see an image of our poster this morning uh, for the Global Women's Breakfast at Chamash University of Technology, and I would like to draw attention to to the woman here. Uh, she is the first graduate of Chamash University in 1917. It's called Vera Sandberg. She was the first engineer and the only woman who graduated that year. So it was her and 500 men graduated as engineers from Chamash. Since then, a lot of things have happened at Chamash, and we have a quite wide uh, area of um, research and education, and we have a lot of women which are represented in in our students' um, uh, programs. So, just to say hello from um, from our meetings this morning, you can see here that uh, you have my colleagues which have been present at the meeting, and also here you have the. screen with our colleagues from benin which have been joining our our meeting as well this morning which was a very nice surprise so we managed to have some guests and um, we have been uh, talking a little bit about what we have done at charmers and how things have been organized and for this i would like to present you a very special program which is called genie which stands for Gen uh, gender initiative for excellence 
And you have me here as a presenter, and I'm also the chemistry representative in Gini project. And also Maria Salina, which is uh, the project manager of this, uh, of this initiative. And uh, why this is important and I would like to show, maybe it is a source of, um, I don't know, maybe a source of um, inspiration for other schools which might be in our position. But why did we do this? Why, why Gini? And you can see here you have the universities in Sweden and there are some universities where a small country compared to India. But you can see that... Um, the number of women is quite small, so the ones in blue represents the number of women and the, the purple represents the number of men in the academic positions. And you can see that my school is basically the last one uh, when it comes to women in academia represented. And we had to do something about that because we thought that this is a very unusual situation despite the fact that we are a technical university which has a strong tradition maybe towards male um, students, but also there are other schools in, in um, Sweden, like uh, we have Gothenburg University and Stockholm and so forth. So that means that uh, something is not or was not working properly in our, in our uh, school. So you can see that the biggest technical universities we have right now in Sweden, uh, the KTH and Chalmers, we are not so well represented when it comes to women in the higher position in academia. So um, then what has happened and why is, well, we have a lot of um, issues which we observed and we have seen, I'm just selecting now some of the text here, but... Um, Women do not feel always represented in a good way, and we have only 17% among the professors. And we are basically having the, the position of worst in Sweden, which is not a very um, nice number, you can say. And um, we have also looked into um, what is affecting specifically women and is funding publications and positions. And then also we have a lot of... Um, risks which we have identified and we have that, so for instance, we have employees which are experiencing an increase in stress or work fragmentation and less collegiality. This call is now being recorded. Neurosurgery. Neurosurgery. I'm sorry. Hominic, gynecology, pediatrics, family medicine. This underlines. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, we we have tried to see uh, what is happening, why why the females are leaving university when it comes to higher position, because among the students we still have a good number, and then we we try to take different approaches to see what what we can do about. And uh, we realized that we have a need for female role models to encourage this excellent uh, uh, way of working. And also, we know that industry wants female engineers as well. And also, uh, we have uh, a knowledge that the industry needs men which are aware of the gender equality. So. Then what did we do about that? Well, we have a strategy to increase the success and the excellent at Chalmers, and especially among women. And we have started a big project. And this big project is equivalent of 30 million euros and uh, is the largest uh, gender initiative ever in academia in the world that we know about. And this is going to last for 10 years. So it has started in 2019 and it's going to continue until 2028. And this initiative is led by the faculty and faculty members. As you can see, we have had some, um, some headlines in the, in the world news, and we are quite proud of that part. And the goal is very clear. Gender equal culture and systems. Increase the female faculty at least to 40% female professors until the end of the project. And we do not want to see any kind of salary gap between the male and female um, professors at that level. So how do we organize the work? Well, Gini is organizing in central actions, you can see, in um, measures and analyzing the data. 
and also in local efforts in the, at the departmental uh, level. And you can see that when it comes to the central action, we are looking at the faculties. We have a lot of faculty um, members at Chalmers, which comprises of 3,000 seniors which are involved in these areas. And then also when you look at the measures and analyzing the di data, we are actively looking into data coming uh, from diverse um, areas. We look at the bibliometry. We are following our PhD students. We have employee survey, and then we look for the key measures which can be implemented depending on the area. And then when you look at the local efforts in the departments, we are providing actively concrete and tailored recommendation, for instance, for promotions, recruitment, culture, leadership, and inclusion and uh, to each department. And then we have also feedback collection, so we know what is happening after we, uh, we are uh, helping in this way. So we have a um, combination of female recruitment and support, and uh, we have a long-term systemic action for uh, cultural changes, because we do have a very big uh, cultural population. You can see we have basically students and teachers from all over the world present. And we have the approach, sorry, uh, we have the approach as a top-down and bottom-up, basically. It's coming from all directions, so we know what is happening. And then we are trying to get the majority on board uh, as, as um, direct action. So you can see a little bit uh, who are the leaders. You can see that we have leadership groups, which are comprising on a lot of people. I will not go through this, but I want to just point out that we have an, an advisory group, which is from outside. And uh, since this has been a very local area, we, we selected a local advisory group, but I think that should be extended probably since, uh, as I said, we are a very mixed uh, population of teachers from all over the world. And then we have the steering group, which is basically the head of our uh, university, uh, Stefan Bengtsson is the president. Uh, along with all the steering group of Chalmers. So uh, we do have their support, but we are not, um, how should I say, obeying them, but we are trying to be an independent um, project. And I can say that we have got a lot of help and we never had a problem to actually interact and, uh, and have support. So what did we do so far? We have done quite a lot. Um, so we have funded extra female assistant professors, uh, starting with 2018 areas of advanced call, which is a special call we have at Chalmers. And uh, they were all of them ranked quite high in, in uh, international competitions. We have a general initiative to provide the startup package for female assistant professor hires. And uh, it has been working very nice so far. We have um, guidelines to support the direct recruitment of top female faculty, and we have two which right now are ongoing. I can say that direct recruitment is not an easy task at Chalmers since we are trying to, to attract uh, from outside a lot of competence, but we realize that we have also a lot of very um, good professionals inside, so the direct recruitment uh, is dedicated for a person. And sometimes it can happen that a direct recruitment comes for a person which is outside Chalmers. That means that we specifically approach somebody which is outside Chalmers and offering a possibility to, to start a position at Chalmers. Um, then we have the open visiting faculty program where we have uh, invited uh, personnel to come and work with us or to spend some time at Chalmers. We have seven approved so far and one is ongoing. Unfortunately, uh, we have had Corona, which uh, set a stop to, to our initiative. It was not easy to, to continue. And then, of course, we have open possibility to get funding to participation at gender equality conferences, but not only. And then we have an open call, which is for intelligent uh, funding for um, excellence coupled to, to gender. But that means that it doesn't have to be a gender research. It has to be maybe a group, which is a mixed group and working at an excellent idea. So far, we have had uh, 30 projects, and uh, which totally uh, were of 23 million crowns only in, in the last year, which is a lot. 
and it covered all depths, you can say. Then, um, what are the measures? Well, we, we gather and publish gender data, which is available, and uh, it can be also sent. Uh, some of it is in English. And we'll, we will also address this academic household work, um, because this has been quite an interesting um, workload, which we never foreseen, and we didn't know how that would work. And there is a lot of data to, to analyze after that. Then we are designing and um, analyze a special employee surveys uh, in order to capture the culture. And uh, here we have a lot of data which is collected and is um, soon to be presented. I will come back with that when I will have it and if somebody is interested. And you, you can look a little bit of some data we are collecting. So you see that um, the base funded faculty roles and assistant professors we have, how many are female and what is the targeted area. And when you look at the full professor, it's at 17%, so it's quite low compared to the targeted area. But when you look at the assistant professor to the younger, um, professionals, we have already reached the female population at 45%, which is a very good number, and hopefully we will manage to uh, get them along all the way to the full professor, because this is the final goal. And I think that started with such a, a nice population, uh, it's going to be a success, but probably it will take time. Then when you are looking at uh, other um, happenings, what, what happens is that we have seen, a, unfortunately, an overrepresentation when it comes to sickness absence uh, percentage per department. And this um, can be put maybe on, on different uh, issues coming from um, real sickness up to sickness provoked by may, maybe stress and work-related issues. So it's a little bit undetermined, but we can see that unfortunately the female population is overrepresented. So this kind of data we are collecting constantly. We have a flow basically coming all the time. So we have a good um, view over what is happening when it comes to this part. Now work and we are working very closely with the departments we have. We have created a toolbox a document with concrete actions. So whoever needs help can just go there and, and pick what they need. There are a series of um, documents which can help and guide. Then we have requested a gender equality plan in, in the department's annual operation plans. And um, we do have and received uh, the majority of the departments have submitted the plan. Uh, this is a working document. So it's going to be updated yearly. We have provided 2 million crowns to each department for their efforts, and this is over five years. Um, so it's for each of these actions, we allocated uh, special funding, so it's not going to um, in any way hinder other, other projects which are ongoing. And then we started a Gini group with uh, one Gini representative from each department, and uh, I'm one of them for chemistry. So... We have done many more things, and just to uh, show a little bit is that uh, we have support for uh, varieties of initiatives. We have a lot of uh, follow-up, bibliometry studies, and so forth. And we have this um, pilot project where we look why women leave at the higher positions, and we started to get some data out. It's not yet concluded. And then we have also all kinds of information events where we have seminar with invited guests. And I sincerely hope that uh, I would have the pleasure to, to have some of you as invited guests. It would be very nice to see also another point of view. We have informal gatherings uh, with fed feedback, and then we have the, the websites and so forth. And then, of course, we have the education and dialogue. And here is basically to talk and listen with people at the university. And we have dialogues with our employment department and we hiring committees and so forth, just to know how, how the applicants are and who they are and what do we wish from them. So it's, it's a little bit of a mix where we offer this opportunity for dialogue and education. So uh, 
this is basically what I would like to say. And uh, you can see basically that Gini has um, has built trust among the faculties and leaders. And uh, we managed to increase awareness and uh, engagement. Of course, this was partly uh, due to the in, um, incentive of funding, but we had to start somewhere. And um, we know that real change will take time and all small actions are important. So with this, I would like to say thank you very much and I will uh, be happy to, to take questions or if you have comments. So thank you very much. Thank you, madam, for your, for your eloquent and mesmerizing presentation. The forum is now open to questions. Participants who wish to present their questions to the speakers may do so by typing them in the chat box section. Any questions? Any questions? I, I can say also that uh, I will be happy to take questions or comments later, uh, because again, okay, it can be a little bit it can be a little bit fresh and uh, a lot of information coming, and I will provide you with a presentation as well, so you will have it. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Us in such a wonderful way. It seems whatever time you have given is not enough because your presentation was so enthralling that we would want to keep listening to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Please take care. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. Thank you. May I now invite the second speaker of today's event, Dr. Adita Joshi. Dr. Joshi, madam, is the director of Sanskriti Foundation, New Delhi, India. She is also the scientific consultant at CSIR Three Shutra Unit, CSIR IGIB, New Delhi, India. Dr. Joshi is the founder director of Sanskriti Foundation that works in the area of capacity building and scientific skill development in science education, communication and outreach. Dr. Joshi works with K-12 schools and undergraduate colleges to conduct training programs for teachers and students. Under her leadership, Sanskriti Foundation has trained more than 150 teachers from schools and colleges, about 1,500 students and professionals in the areas of pedagogy of inquiry, animal models, experimentology, technical and scientific writing, and obviously science communication. Dr. Joshi obtained her PhD degree from Department of Zoology, University of Delhi in the year 2008. She did her postdoctoral research at Singapore General Hospital and Temsek Life Sciences Laboratory, Singapore. Her research work was on genetics and genomics of animal models and non-coding RNA biology in zebrafish. Dr. Joshi embraced a shift in her career trajectory from scientific research to capacity building in science education while choosing to work at CSIR IGIB as the project coordinator for a CSIR Mayo Clinic collaborative program called Integrated Science Education Outreach. Dr. Joshi received training and certification in teacher training and pedagogy of inquiry from Mayo Clinic, Rochester, USA. She conducted a number of trainings, workshops, and events for teachers and students from 2013 to 2017. She founded Sanskriti Foundation in the year 2015 while still working at CSIR IGIB and shifted to the full-time position of director in the year 2017. Since then, Dr. Joshi has extended her repertoire from school education to higher education. She runs a collaboration with Daulat Ram College, University of Delhi, under an MOU with Sanskriti Foundation and has set up a zebra fish research lab, resource and teaching center. Dr. Joshi is a mentor for undergraduate research and organizes student internship, workshops, and faculty development program at this center. May I now request Professor Dr. Joshi Madam to deliver her presentation. 
मैम यू आर म्यूटेड ओके कैन यू हियर मी नाउ यस मैम यस मैम thanks a lot dr amrit for having me here it's uh, indeed you know a galaxy of uh, people who have put forward this interesting program and uh, i'm thankful to tedora for setting up the stage so nicely and you know talking about all the initiatives that are being taken at charmers to promote you know gender inclusion and to promote women in science so that was a good stage setting i would uh, rather touch a different nerve so my presentation is going to be about uh, my career journey and uh, uh, in the context of you know uh, women in science leadership and uh, gender equality and i'm sure my career journey would resonate with career journey of many women in science in india because the asian culture you know it has its own reflections and it is uh, it poses different kind of uh, you know barriers and challenges to women who are working in the area of science and otherwise so let me know i'm trying to share my screen if you all can see it uh, dr mitra i have 40 minutes right for this yes ma'am yes ma'am even even ma'am you can extend no problem okay so um, yeah just let me know if you can see my screen yes ma'am yes ma'am yes okay so i'll go to full screen mode now yes ma'am Yes. Uh, so, uh, yes, a warm welcome to all the patrons of this program, and a uh, 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 heartfelt smile to all the students who are attending uh, this particular session, both men and women. Okay. So, uh, the topic that is given to me is uh, to talk about role of women in science in the context of leadership equality and work-life balance. and i am trying to sort of uh, you know take you through uh, the journey of uh, my own career progression and as i said that it will have overlaps with career progressions of many many women in science with the barriers and other things in place so let's hear about it i have outlined the talk into four different parts i'll talk about my early student life ranging to my professional life and then uh, how i evolved into a uh, uh you know career uh, which you know which with which i identify as a professional and then into a leadership role so while all this was happening parallelly uh, you know uh, the things that i have mentioned here in red were also ongoing right and uh, you know early student life is very happy you are single as you progress as you go further as you make your domestic choices you know you end up into having a family so on and so forth and then you take up a role of a, you know a professional sometimes supporting your own ambition sometimes supporting the ambitions of your spouse or your partner you uh, as you age you also have parents who are aging or in laws who are aging you have those kinds of roles also and parallelly your career is progressing now all this journey is in the context of you know the indian culture wherein you know you need to achieve work life balance you need to deliver both at the domestic and professional fronts and the journey i would say that it is same for men and women but women have you know they have more responsibilities of child bearing and you know taking care of kids and the family so in this context women need a lot of support and this is where you know uh, the supportive role of the society comes so uh, uh, i remember a uh, professor damodar uh, mentioned that you know this uh, whole global breakfast series is all about including people from small towns and more and more inclusion and diversity so i present a very good example i was schooled in a very small town of modinagar in the ghaziabad district in up uh, and um, for us uh, the only dream was to you know uh, take admission in delhi university so as a student i could achieve that i entered uh, as a bachelor of science student in delhi university and followed by my masters at uh, goa university so uh, how university shapes up a individual i i was in a women's college and i could see you know i met a lot of uh, friends women colleagues who were embarking on a totally different life after their uh, you know graduation was over most of my batchmates they got married early at the age of 21 or 22 but you know uh, i decided to get take a different route and then i applied for a, a biotechnology en entrance test and uh, 
ended up at Goa University to do my MSc in biotechnology. The whole sole idea of taking biotechnology was it was an evolving new field and I thought I would have a good career in this particular field so that was our understanding as you know undergraduate in those uh, times it is 1998 there were no mobile phones there was no internet uh, there were no training programs and conferences like this where you could reach out to people who can you know present to you their life stories or motivate you so it was a very different world than we live in here after passing my uh, masters as i said that uh, my whole soul uh, uh, rationale of taking biotechnology was to sort of find a job and then I could find myself a job in 2000 after passing my master's. It was good pay but there was not much scope for learning and that particular job at NBPGR, this is a good very renowned institute, uh, so that particular experience made me think that you know uh, or sort of rediscover myself as a student, as a professional that I need uh, you know a lot of new learning to grow as a professional. That was the time I changed. I made a shift to another institute. Uh, this was National Research Center for Plant Biotechnology. There was good pay and there was good learning. Okay, so both the things were uh, there. But then that was the time point when I decided that, okay, uh, it is time for me to take up, uh, you know, uh, research more seriously. So uh, that particular stay at NRCPB was an eye-opener. I started liking research all the way more, and I decided to do a PhD. Having said that, uh, so uh, to all the male and female students who are there in this, uh, don't end up doing a PhD just because, you know, it is the next step. After master's, it is the next step. So don't do that. Please explore out options, work after your master's and then decide whether you are cut out for a role uh, of a researcher or not. So uh, I did that for myself and it was really helpful. And when I entered into the PhD, I joined at uh, Delhi University Department of Zoology and uh, it was great learning there. And I was on a CSIR fellowship. So, you know, uh, money was also coming in. Why I'm mentioning money and good pay and uh, whatever is that's very, very important. And uh, uh, Tidora has already sort of touched upon uh, pay parity in terms of gender equality at workplaces. So I'll talk about those things later on as I move through this. So that was very good. And uh, next I will talk about support system, which is the lifeline of women in science. Now, why this slide all of a sudden, you know, uh, so uh, when I joined for my PhD, the same year I got married. So that was a different, uh, you know, uh, uh, parallel path, domestic path that I had, you know, started along with my professional uh, career journey. And uh, in the first year of my PhD only, I, I was expecting my first child. So that is something which, which is not a very, very wanted situation for a PhD supervisor or even for a PhD researcher. But, you know, life has its own uh, surprises and I had one. Anyways, so uh, uh, and there comes the role of mentors and support systems. So I'll talk about how, you know, mentors and supervisors, they supported me in my journey and how, you know, it should be to support women in science. How a uh, spouse, your spouse, your partner, you know, or uh, your kids when they are grown up, how you can seek support for them for your own career development. Parental support is very important. It has been, you know, it has been a part of the practice in Indian cultural society systems and domestic support is very, very important. So I sort of put all these support systems in place in order to do justice to the career uh, path and to the PhD degree that I was embarked upon. So please, uh, one thing that here I want to highlight is support systems are very important. Don't try to be a superwoman or a wonder woman have your support systems in place, negotiate it out, negotiate it with your spouse, with your parents, with your in-laws, with yourself and your domestic support. Without it, you're not going to make it happen. So uh, this is the message to all the female colleagues. Then I would also share a few tips. Um, so uh, for a women in science, for, uh, for a women in science who is also a mother at the same time, you know, you're pursuing your research, you're also rearing a baby, so on and so forth. Please, please, please embrace responsibility and do not embrace guilt at all. Uh, 
so any women will have all these kinds of you know guilt trips that you know i can't take care of my child as nicely or so on and so forth but but you know you'll have you'll have good time with your kids once they are grown up and they don't remember anything once they are small i mean that's that's the humor that i have added here don't sort of take it uh, literally uh, many a times women uh, they think they overthink a lot they do compare a lot that you know i am married when i was a phd student i was married i was uh, you know in the process of having a family and when i would look at my uh, you know colleagues from masters they were all enjoying phd's in different institutes across india across globe so there were time points when i felt oh my god uh, you know uh, i am sort of i'm lagging behind or you know i am not getting what i should have got those kind of thoughts would crisp cross your mind you know at at those different kind of stages you are very vulnerable when you are trying to manage both the things together so one thing that i have learned uh, you know that don't compare yourself to others don't compare your life journey your career journey to others rather than focus on you know carving out your own path maintain positive company stay away from negative people who could tell you you know it is going to be difficult so on and so forth and have fun pamper yourself and your near and dear ones maintain a hobby those are some of the tips that i practiced when i was you know undertaking those kind of responsibilities both at the professional as well as as the domestic fronts now another tip is prioritize the professional work so come what may if you are you know in research or in any kind of job for that matter you know you need to prioritize on your professional work do not sit on your work that you know i'll do it later this that don't look for excuses never procrastinate this is something which is very damaging uh, you know and it can it can be very very damaging to your self esteem at times because if you are not able to deliver people will start talking about you know oh she has a family she has a kid she has a young kid she is not serious so on and so forth so you'll you'll you know get those kind of judgments around you which are very debilitating so prioritize your professional work and then uh, at the domestic front train your spouse you know identify key areas where your spouse could be of help to you you know don't force your uh, spouse you know into cooking the dinner if he doesn't like it maybe he loves ironing the clothes so put him on that job you know so do those kind of uh, systems in your house train your domestic help also so uh, hire a domestic domestic help train the domestic help and and use her or him to your you know best and seek perfection when i say seek perfection it is only at the work front and i mean i've given an example that your messy wardrobe can wait so uh, don't try to be a perfectionist in all walks of life and i call uh, these few tips i have divided it into the emotional question which is eq the professional question and the domestic question so you need first and foremost you need to be emotionally stable you have to have the emotional question very very strong in order to play these kind of roles as a human in science and professional question again never take your never second your professional work for anything and this is where the work life balance thing will also come and i'll talk about that and domestic question i would again say that you know as far as you your meal is cooked nicely you can wear some good nice clothes and you have a small decent house don't care about you know anything more if those things are in place the basic necessity the basic needs are taken care of maybe for those 5 6 years when you are you know uh, deep into research you can ignore the other things so uh, having said that now there are two stories from my phd uh, wherein if you want to support women in science we have been asking about you know the roles of society the roles of spouse the role of in laws but most important is that a women should stand for women so i call it wfw which is women for women and here is an example there are two ladies in this picture one is dr shanti chandrashekharan she was my co supervisor during uh, my phd and the other girl is hema she was the colleague in the lab and uh, the things about dr shanti was she was a very hard task master she would not let you slip away you know even if you are you want to she will make sure things are done at the same time she was very empathetic she would understand the problems and she was a perfect role model for me 
so uh, from her i have learned that be empathetic but be a hard task master you just can't you know be sloppy around things and all this is what she taught me and uh, the the other part of the story will come in the next slide but then let's focus here on hema so as i said that as i started my phd i was already in the family way i was expecting my first child and uh, uh, dr shanti gave me a, a tough time you know helped me a lot to balance everything together and the following year when i already had my baby and i joined back the lab that year hema was expecting so hema i remember her words hema said adita the way you the way you carried uh, your pregnancy and the way you did your lab work made things very easy for me now dr shanti is much more easy on me and she is giving me two months extra unpaid leave those days you know they were uh, the the maternity leave was only 3 months and often employers would not give unpaid leave they would just say you know leave the job and go so uh, you know uh, the story here is and i am not trying to glorify myself here but there are many many women researchers who have set up good examples in front of their supervisors so that any new women researcher who is coming in you know gets better opportunity and and not gets judged you know for for trying to have a family or trying to support other kind of system other than research so that's the part of story here what shanti ma'am did for me was um, when i was in the third year of my phd my daughter was already some two and a half years old she motivated me to apply for a traveling fellowship uh, uh, from a uh, a journal called development it is it is published by the company of balages limited so professor shanti knew dr j l marsh and uh, the the phd uh, problem that we were working on he was also having similar interests so uh, basically these fellowships they accept your proposal if it has scientific value and if you have another pi sitting in another country uh, who is ready to host you so she motivated me i was very jerky my daughter was 2 and a half years old and i know she was still a baby i don't i was not even ready to apply and she motivated me she said adita why don't you apply just by applying you will not get through so let's apply and see whether you get through or not and i applied for the fellowship i received the fellowship and here comes the role of society again you know my spouse were very very supportive he said uh, that you know uh, you should take it because uh, there is no coming back you know you are not going to do your phd again and you are not going to get this opportunity again so uh, that that was the supportive part of a mentor and a spouse and i as i said you know these are the lifelines of women researchers so uh, all the male colleagues all the female colleagues who are listening to this story you know uh, i mean and there are i am sure there are many more stories from different women researchers like this but this is something that has happened to me in reality with both the support system i i went there and uh, you know there was this uh, uh, this uh, uh, dream and uh, that you know as a researcher i i wanted to visit a foreign lab and see how things are practiced globally in the field of research but i never thought it would happen because of the family and the other things but then dr shanti motivated me and it did happen for me so i feel that i was very lucky so post phd i i did my phd and then it was time to sort of move further and again you know after phd it's a big question mark whether you want to pursue research whether you want to do a post doc or you want to get into teaching you want to get into industry or take up another profession so uh, so far the research was going good for me i enjoyed each and every moment of my phd though there were you know there were times when experiments would fail things would not run the way i wanted them to but i enjoyed each and every day of my phd so if if you have that kind of a spirit then you must go in for a phd anyway now i shifted to singapore to do my post doctoral research and this is uh, how it looked like my first post doctoral position was at singapore general hospital and this is me with my two kids here my daughter was grown up but at that time i already had another four month baby in my lap so this was the bag and baggage with which i sort of entered into singapore um, 
I joined Singapore General Hospital as a research scientist in Department of Zoo- Urology. It was a world-class hospital. I got to see, you know, how uh, the hospitals perform both in the field of healthcare as well as research. I got one of the best bosses there. He was again, you know, a very very supportive, very very uh, very good mentor. And what he did was that he very very clearly notified me the deliverables adita you are supposed to do this 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 sometimes you don't get those uh, you know that kind of a clarity from mentors and then you know it becomes a mess he was very clear about what he wanted so good salaries and other perks you know my with a with a infant in your lap and having a job in hospital you know they made vaccinations so easy for me that uh, you know it was an added benefit anyways what i offered them so so it runs both way what you receive and what you offer so i offered them two things one was professionalism and deliverables whatever my boss told me that these are the deliverables i negotiated with him yes i can deliver this and you know we have we would have our own scientific discussions on that the other thing that i offered him was honesty and transparency now what do i exactly mean by here and why it is important in a career in research or otherwise Uh, for male or female it doesn't matter well yeah. so uh, the the project that i got there was uh, studying you know uh, gene fusions in prostate cancer tissue i was uh, a biologist in my phd i worked on a animal model system which is the small little fruit fly i did a lot of genetics and all but uh, i was not very keen on taking up this particular position but you know i moved to singapore my husband moved with me and i thought that this is once in a lifetime opportunity again if i if i don't take up this job maybe i'll just settle down with the young infant and take a break so i didn't wanted a career break i told my supervisor my boss there that see this is something which which is you know which i don't hate but i also don't like i will treat this particular position very very professionally i'll deliver what you want but then i will not stay for long here so this was one thing that i told him up front when i had my interview for this position when i went there and uh, as i said that he agreed he said okay adita even if you are there for an year uh, it is good and let's talk out our deliverable and uh, you know start working towards it so the message here is that you know uh, women researchers they have lots of baggage, baggage baggage of you know kids family this and that so if you are a cutthroat professional be transparent negotiate what you know you bring to the table negotiate your barriers and other sort of things and then deliver it becomes very easy your your work life becomes less stressful and anyways when i left this particular place my boss was uh, you know he he wished me good luck he said yes good because you already told me i i was here in this place for about 10 months so um, because i i was looking for other uh, interesting options for me which would interest me more which would give me a career so sometimes in your career uh, trajectory you have to take those kind of decisions and for me it was very very different because i didn't want to miss the opportunity you know uh, and i've already spoken about that good thing is that uh, after i left this uh, particular position Five years later, our research work was published, and my boss was, uh, you know, kind enough to give me a medal or her name in the research publication. Uh, I would say that my boss was kind, but I would also say that you know my professionalism also brought that authorship in that paper, even after leaving the lab for you know uh, more than four or five years. So be professional, be transparent, be honest, and it will fetch you good rewards. now uh, from singapore general hospital i shifted to tll which is temasek life sciences laboratory i shifted to another animal model which is zebra fish and i i got what i wanted you know having worked on an animal model in my phd now i was very excited about this role but let me tell you a story here uh, you know of getting hired at tll or temasek life sciences laboratory now when i shifted to temasek the hr interviewed me and temasek had a baby crash so they would hire me on a salary which was less than what singapore general hospital offered me and their argument was that the baby will go to this crash and we will give you you know a uh, whatever some kind of discount 
see now you imagine a male colleague in this role the male colleague will never face this kind of you know conversation in an interview especially you are deserving i i made through i presented uh, my work there i qualified the interview and then they were hiring me so these are uh, you know these are areas where uh, the hr units the institutions should bring in a policy in place to promote gender equality i was taken on a 400 dollar cut at tll because my baby was going to the crash that they had so uh, you are supporting the women researcher by offering a crash but then you are sort of nullifying that support by you know reducing the salary so that's one story here that was you know not not a good part of the story but the good part of being at tll was that it gave me cutting edge research infrastructures i traveled to couple of uh, you know countries for conferences the hr was seamless about it they would they would create you know all kinds of helpful things for you they would do your visa they would get your ticket done so that you can you know attend global conferences and bring in uh, you know all those good research back to tll so very very professionally uh, you know growing environment that they offered me and i'm really thankful to them for that but then you know that pay cut and that the baby crash thing is just you know which needs more attention and more policy level changes anyway so that uh, brings me to the to the uh, the end of my early student and early professional life now so far so good but what next so uh, before i move on to the next segment let us talk about career breaks so uh, because that that is a question many people have asked me you have had two kids did you take a career break at all so i would say that yes career breaks are inevitable for women researchers in uh, science now uh, in my time when i was doing uh, phd there was no child care leave there was maternity leave was only 3 months now the government has taken note of it the indian government they have increased the maternity leave to 6 months uh the provision of child care leave is also there up to 2 years so all those things are there but uh when you talk about my journey uh i did not take much of a career break my only career break was of 8 months when i was expecting my second child and that was also due to medical complications however uh, people have taken longer career breaks so uh the advice that i would want to give to women researchers who are taking a break is train yourself to enjoy the reason for which you have taken break if you have taken break for baby sitting enjoy it to the fullest don't wait for that break to open that uh, to sort of end up and then don't you know uh, sort of uh, uh, talk negatively about it oh because i had a baby i had to sit at home don't talk about that because again remember the eq the pq and the dq the emotional question has to be very very robust in case of female researchers so uh, train yourself enjoy if you have taken the break for the baby enjoy your baby to the fullest you know have fun that time is never going to come back again right gain a new skill or revive a ignored hobby so uh, gain a new skill you know in that time nowadays i mean in my days there were not so much of online things happening with the pandemic in place everything is online there are courses online there are master classes going on so for the current crop of women researchers i would suggest that you know there is a lot that the world has to offer so try and explore those options read and keep yourself updated about what is happening in the field okay you might not be at the bench you know setting up experiments or reactions but uh the world is open to you as i said you know internet has revolutionized the way people are learning the way education is happening the way you know skill building is happening so do do that indulge yourself in those kind of uh, you know positive uh, boosting self esteem boosting activities and be patient and believe in yourself that's the foremost important thing during a career break don't compare again that you know oh this person has got this position this person is doing so great and i mean here i have put this uh, famous song from the movie gali bai which is like apna time aayega means you will also arrive at some point in your life something will happen so career trajectories of different people are different timelines are different no 
one journey is the same so believe in yourself be patient and keep working keep working keep learning new things keep gaining new things and you are sure to success you know to find success now um yeah having uh, having gone through all those things uh, it was time for me to sort of identify a career for myself okay fine phd has is done now post doc is also over now what next and that was the time when i decided to move back to india my husband was already in india and i was living in singapore with uh, the two kids that was one time when i decided that okay uh, it's enough i have taken the experience that i wanted to uh, if you want to apply to institutions in india minimum 3 years of post doc or 2 to 3 years of post doc experience was required which i had already you know covered so uh, it was time for me to move back in the interest of family because i can't be staying alone you know so came back to india and i joined a uh, csir institute of genomics and integrative biology before i was trying to move back to india i was thinking about the kind of career that i would embrace people suggested me apply for a dst women scientist uh, which i considered initially but then i i sort of gave it up there were two reasons one reason was that uh, uh, you know my husband was into a transferable job he would not sit in delhi forever number one so i was thinking of a career trajectory which can offer me more flexibility in terms of geography and in terms of you know if i have to move places with my husband that was one initial decision that i had taken that was not forced upon me that was not you know suggested to me that was my own decision okay having lived in singapore for about 2 3 years uh, separately that was one decision that i took and that is where i decided of you know venturing into uh, capacity building and you know uh, working more with people improving the practice of science education science communication so on and so forth that was my thought process and sometimes you know uh, the um, you know god gives you what you want uh, that has happened in my life so when i joined igip i joined as a project scientist and uh, my role was to sort of uh, uh, mentor phd students um, and uh, i was not the pi i was not the phd supervisor but then i the, the role was given to me was like that it was more like a staff scientist kind of a role it was a project of 5 years and my boss uh, shridhar sivasuppu at igib he is uh, a pioneer in the field of setting up genomics in india and arts is a genomics institute he asked me several question aditha what do you want to do next and what kind of a career you are looking at and uh, so on and so forth and i said that you know uh, i am good at research but this is not something i would want to take up as a career for the time being it is okay but it's not i'm looking you know forward to and uh, then shridhar of- offered me a particular uh, project in which there was a lot of component of science education outreach so again the role of mentor comes in here he he must have seen something or identified something you know in my needs or after talking to me that i can pull up this uh, role of a science education outreach coordinator so shridhar is here in this picture and this is our group at igib this is me here and uh, that was a very good time i learned a lot i learned how to mentor phd student this one is ram uh, this student is ram ram is currently at mayo clinic uh, florida this is ankit who is also at mayo clinic rochester so these are the students whom i mentored and uh, uh, they gave me a lot of learning on how to mentor students how what kind of problems students face you know during their phd what are their barriers what kind of skills are lacking so uh, you know that was a lot of learning experience and uh, um, parallelly i was also taking care of the teacher training program so uh, this was a risk taking step in my career because normally you would not see phd's you know taking up these kind of career path back then in 2012 now people are you know experimenting with different kind of career trajectories but 8 8 9 years ago it was not uh, you know so common and uh, that was 
a time of decision making and that was also uh, an opportunity for fostering the creativity and innovation so a bench researcher is now venturing out into schools talking to school principals talking to academic coordinators at schools in telling them about you know uh, conducting of teacher training programs to improve science learning and education with no background in education with no background in how to deal with people and schools in india you know uh, you all know that they have their own separate structure and organization and ways of working so it was risk what if the project fails what uh, and anyways it was a four years project what will i do next it was a lot of risk many of my colleagues would say aditha don't take up this because you know not many much is happening in this field write a women scientist research project at least you will get a uh, scientist position for 3 years so on and so forth so if you remember i say that you know maintain positive company just get rid of all these negative people if you are sure about what you want to do you know just 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 be deaf to those statements and i never listen to them i i received a lot of uh, you know uh, judgment on oh she is not a good researcher that's why she has opted out for this or that so just 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 you know just ignore all those things just focus what you want to do where your you know skills lie that was a very big skill building opportunity for me also so i i got trained at mayo clinic rochester usa in pedagogy of inquiry i ran several teacher training programs so these are different school teachers here this is at the center me i trained teachers in using zebra fish model system and how to run inquiry based experiments using that particular model system apart from you know uh, educational concepts like pedagogy so on and so forth so uh, i learned a lot and you know i disseminated a lot worked with different kind of teachers learned a lot of uh, you know things about education practices with them how learning happens in classrooms how teaching happens in classrooms that was a very very exciting phase of my life and and it was you know indeed a decision well taken it was an uncharted territory not many phd's would venture into this kind of a territory but it was it was out and out a great learning experience and a great empowering experience also so i'll talk about it more um, this lady is madi she was a student now here comes the concept of reverse mentoring if you are trying to build up new skills you need to learn from youngsters that is one message that i would again want to give to all the faculty and all the people who are listening to me at this point of time so madi was a gra- undergraduate student but her her experience in teacher training and in working with schools was uh, almost 3 years more than mine so when i visited rochester i made friends with her and i totally you know normally people think oh i am a phd she is an undergraduate so just get rid of all those baggages again and and uh, learn so uh, that that has worked for me i learned a lot from her and that made my life easy back in india when i was working with school teachers so build new skills learn reverse mentoring uh, this particular program also told me uh, how to communicate with people here's a group of teachers from od uh, from uh, rochester and here is group of teachers from odisha kit international school the fundamentals of teaching learning are same everywhere you know some of the problems are same everywhere with uh, with cross cultural differences so i my whole uh, you know understanding about how teachers teach how learning happens it sort of transformed with this particular program and uh, after spending 2 years into this program i started diversifying i started contacting different kind of you know uh organizations where you know science communication or scientific skill building opportunities were there i collaborated with national science center at delhi to conduct a camp, summer camp so on and so forth and uh for the program that i started with csir igib i also uh, uh this gentleman here is christopher parrot he represents the mayo clinic uh he was looking for the expansion of the outreach program and i knew someone at kit uh, this is uh, dr mrithunjay suwar he happened to be my masters senior senior in my masters so we knew each other and i sort of you know brought everyone to the table and we set up another center for science and teaching at kit university odisha now if you look at this picture all are men here except you know one lady standing and talking to all the fellows so this is 
this is where you know we need to work hard upon right i need more women probably in this particular group so that you know we have more inclusion and more representation of female powers so uh, the message is if i can do it if many more women can do it you can also do it so all the young women researchers all the young female students must take you know those kind of leading paths and i'll talk about leadership also what leadership looks like to me later in the evening but then you know these were these were the times when i was evolving as a leader i would not say that you know i was a leader in the in the traditional definition now leadership to me means leading yourself it is not leading a group of people it is not leading an organization first you need to lead yourself once you are able to lead yourself once you know you know what it takes to lead a particular uh, passion a particular job a particular objective then only uh, you know you can lead others so this is what leadership looks like to me and women need to lead themselves despite of all the you know all the things all kinds of disparities all kind of inequalities if you decide to lead yourself you can and and remember the support systems the support systems are important so please lead yourself into making those support systems as well okay so with this i would also want to acknowledge shridhar who is who was my boss at itib he mentored me a lot he said adita this project is not going to stay forever at csir you should start something of your own he was the one who sort of uh, you know mentored me motivated me to start sanskriti foundation so uh, he happened to visit odisha for one of his conferences and he was at the science and teaching center which sort of i uh, helped establish with uh, kit university and he sent me this picture he said adita i am very proud of you that you know i am able to come to this center and visited this center so uh, this was one of those again you know those inspiring moments for me your mentors are going to places where you were involved and they are sending you back pictures what more you can ask for so uh, again i would say my boss at singapore shridhar at igib these were all wonderful male mentors that i have got i had shanti dr shanti as my female mentor so mentorship is very important if you are a male mentor try and if you see a woman you know who has some level of capacity or competency uh, this is what shridhar brought out in me and he is he is a wonderful colleague he is he is at igib i am also giving this talk from igib as of now and now from a role of boss he has transferred into a colleague and again you know for any kind of mentorship if i want i always seek his advice so those are the role models in mentorships we are looking for so so far i have evolved into a career in science into a leadership role now it was time to take up you know that leadership role in traditional sense where you get these designation like i am the director of this foundation or i am the i am the you know chief of operations or i am the chief of human resource so on and so forth so these are all different leadership de- designations so this was the time and i started uh, sanskriti foundation uh now the foundation works in the area of capacity building in science education communication and outreach it's a not for profit organization and we work in these areas uh, science communication science writing pedagogy of inquiry in science teaching curriculum internet intervention and we also train students on zebra fish and drosophila model system so if you see i i have not i have left the core research but i have maintained touch with you know my two beautiful model system zebra fish and drosophila you know uh, the two model systems gave me my phd and postdoc experiences and now i train students on how to utilize these system as tools to understand you know what experimental design looks like what scientific method looks like how research is to be done so those are the key areas where i am invested into and i still use these two model systems i set up a collaboration with dalit ram college uh, delhi university dalit ram college is my alma mater i did my graduation from there and uh, life comes full circle the teacher who taught me zoology when i was an undergraduate student she visited us uh, in igib and she said adita we want to start zebra fish lab in college so would you help us i was still at igib and it was shridhar who told me adita why don't you enter into an mou and you know launch sanskriti foundation from there 
so the this was you know you know when you are all prepared when you have done the background work when you are when we are continuously working towards it uh, everything comes into place you know the whole jigsaw puzzle comes into a place and you you see the big picture out there so that is what happened right people right time right decision risk taking is what you know led to the establishment of this center now we use this center as a resource center to help teachers uh, you know with uh, with zebrafish experiments if they want to uh, want to take zebrafish embryos for teaching developmental biology that's a resource center we conduct a lot of training programs for students internship programs for students so on and so forth so yes uh, uh, collaboration now nowadays nothing is happening without a collaboration so what what are the key elements that i learned in this exercises you have to have teamwork you have to have ownership you have to have respect for the collaborators and authority so in a collaboration make sure that your authority is also not compromised but at the same time do it respectfully you know so those are some of the key uh, things sometimes you would see that your collaborator is not you know delivering but then take the ownership because uh, take the ownership negotiate with the collaborator that this is what we need to do so those are certain other skills that i learned when i started this collaboration so uh, these are the teachers who taught me uh, as a undergraduate and uh, now the center is up and running functional and we run a lot of programs now let's talk about the gender gaps why you don't see women leaders or why you don't see women in science so much now these are two pictures and and again this is me with my daughter this was a sunday morning and i had to go to lab to set up some reaction some experiment was running so again i would say if it is a male colleague probably the situation will not be like this you know so those are uh, those are some of the challenges that women face and uh, uh, shanti opened the lab for uh, my daughter to come in she says as long as she is safe you can keep her safe you can walk into the lab for half an hour make her sit somewhere and do the experiment and go off so uh, uh, because there was no crash in that particular area now you have all those baby sitting arrangements i had to bring my daughter because my husband was traveling he was not there uh, on that particular sunday to you know take care of my daughter so those kind of scenarios are there now this is the this is the picture of a lady uh, and and many women why i have titled it women who are not in science many women you know they fear these kind of situations they they are so afraid that you know that with the demands that research need to offer along with family along with you know getting married or along with taking care of parents so on and so forth that they, they are deterred for not choosing research as a career they they think that you know other careers are okay but the thing is not like that any career if you are a professional you will have to do work life balance right and you have to be have uh, you have to be a cut short professional but in science many many i have i have interacted with a lot of undergraduate students a lot of post graduate students and they say no 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 uh, you know uh, uh, the only reason is because you know biologically the child bearing age and the research when you do these overlap and we would not want to sort of take up a career or you know take up leadership roles we will we are just happy with what we are doing you know i'm just happy doing a phd and uh, sort of teaching in a college or teaching in a school uh, if you like teaching in a college or teaching in a school it's fine but if you are cut out for larger uh, goals don't get intimidated you know things work out now this let's talk about this particular picture here uh, this is a lady she wanted to study science uh, she is from a, a remote town in Uh, from one of the states in india and csr igib has a outreach day so she visited us here and she is looking at zebra fish embryos uh, probably a lady who never uh, sort of uh, studied after class 6th but the excitement that she had and the kind of questions she asked oh my god i was like she should have got an opportunity so uh, let us try and build those kind of opportunities let us let us sort of you know encourage our daughters our sisters our colleagues whosoever they are to uh, embrace science and to sort of uh, look for uh, more representation of women in science so these were some of the real life experiences that i have had so i thought it would be uh, you know good to share it and i went on with my own uh, own uh, uh, 
uh, interest of building capacity, training, so, and so on and so forth. So now these training workshops have become a part and parcel of my life. I, I invite teachers, I go to colleges, I train, I carry zebrafish all around, I train students on scientific method, and I enjoy every bit of it. Uh, uh, once you do all this, then people start recognizing you. They start, you know, okay, yeah, this person can be used in different ways. And that was uh, one of those uh, areas wherein Isaac Pune called me for, uh, uh, you know, helping them organize a workshop. And this time we were training professionals. So we were training scientists, we were training associate professor faculties in the area of scientific project management. And... Uh, I'm not a finance person, but the skills that I brought to the workshop was, you know, how to organize training, how to interact with participants, how to design interactive activities for the participants in order to deliver the content. So those were my skills. So once you get this kind of recognition, then you are a leader, then you, you get the recognition. People start, you know, collaborating with you, start uh, doing things with you. That's a very, very good enabler and, and, and very, very, uh, you know, empowering feeling that uh, people are calling you for the work you have done, not because you are somebody or somebody. So that's very empowering. And uh, I left CSIR IGIB in 2017, but then um, they called me back in 2019 in a different role. So now I work here as a consultant. It's a part-time role. And uh, they also had an outreach program wherein uh, the the... Uh, Ayurveda doctors, they are being trained in the area of integrative medicine and IR genomics. So IGIB started the field of IR genomics almost 18 years back after after proving a lot of, uh, you know, Ayurveda concepts using more modern methods. They decided to start capacity building and then they say, Adita, you are already doing, you know, these different kinds of training and workshop. Why don't you join us as a consultant and work with us? So this is out and out, you know, your work is being recognized. You are working with good professionals. You are working with good institutes. You are working at national level uh, for the skills that you have sort of built and learned over years. So that's that's where it is. Um, are working at national uh, level and challenges uh, for, for the skills that you now have sort is of an example. built and I'll learned over my years. So that's, that's minutes, where it is at the end of uh, this. Uh, this working at uh, particular level uh, and challenges for the skills that you have sort of built and learned over years. So that's where it is at the end of this. I was invited to share the conducting of my case training for the skills that you have sort of built and learned over years. So that's where it is at the end of this. I was invited to share the conducting of my case training for the skills that you have sort of built and learned over years. So that's where it is at the end of this. I was invited to share the conducting of my case training for the skills that you have sort of built and learned over years. Uh, given the culture, given the geography of that area, I don't know. I mean, I'm not judging anyone, but then the initial, uh, the initial conversations were very, very uh, tough. Not that they did it. Uh, so, uh, and I had to work hard on those two days, you know, to build up, you know, those kind of associations with the participants to sort of make them uh, make them feel comfortable with the thing that you know don't look at me as a woman or don't look at me as a single person trying to teach you anything so those are some of the things that I have faced uh, initial two days were very discomforting for me and again I'm not saying that they made it on purpose it's just how it is but then as sort of as we move through the training workshop uh, I could see that the participants would approach me, would ask me that, you know, madam, uh, how to go about this and all. So uh, that's, again, another learning experience. And maybe it was a it was an eye opener for both the sides for me as well. And even they sort of uh, by the end of the third day, they were very comfortable in seeing me in a, in a trainer's position, somebody who can, you know, point out on their mistakes and somebody who can coach them on how to improve. So those were the uh, the positives. Those were the win-wins for me during this training program. Towards the fag end of the training, one of them also came and they started discussing, you know, uh, more details about their career, so on and so forth. So uh, again, you know, uh, things may uh, intimidate you. Things may, certain scenarios may, you know, make you uncomfortable, but then just 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 think big just think of the larger goal you know you are there to stay you are there to improve yourself you are there to you know take those extra steps so just 
be brave and focus on delivering always focus on delivering don't focus on anything else so once you focus on delivering what you are supposed to do the word is yours whether it is male female or whatever so that's that's a picture from there and talking about stereotypes we need to understand them and break them for women researchers within our society now this is a training workshop that i did with undergraduate students at miranda house and i asked them to draw pictures of leaders and i asked them to draw pictures of teachers and i asked them to draw pictures of scientists and this is what i got so if it is a teacher it has to be a female if it is a leader it has to be a male and if it is a leader it has to be followed by some 10 people and if it is a scientist it has to be this curly hair with whatever goggles and all so these are the stereotypes and i asked those uh, that was a women college miranda house at delhi university i asked them why you did not draw a male you know as a teacher and why you did not draw a female as a leader many of them said that madam teacher is the most common profession which you know the parents suggest us to do for balancing family and for balancing you know profession so if you are there as a teacher just because you are a women and you have to balance family sorry i mean it's it is never going to contribute to nation building if you are there as a leader just because you are a male and you lack leadership qualities sorry so it's again not going to help you know build the nation that we all are striving to build and scientist you know uh, i mean uh, we have had tedora as uh, as uh, one of the leading scientist and she spoke about you know the first females at her university so you know we have to support women to be to make those beginnings and there are good women researchers across india now uh, so look for those role models and try to be uh, you know uh, try to be role models for the next generation of crops so break these stereotypes break the the gender divide break the kind of you know domestic chores that we have assigned for male versus female so on and so forth so this is a picture he's he's my 12 years old son and he is cooking in the kitchen and i'm very happy about it and i would love to see him cooking when his wife is away at work sometime you know 10 15 20 years down the line so this is where so so you lead yourself whether it is in the professional front whether it is in breaking stereotypes whether it is you know uh, uh, coaching the next generation of uh, of males this is where your role lies as a professional and as this thing uh this is probably i guess it is the last slide yeah so this is again a story that i would want to bring in and uh i was invited as a as a expert for a cbsc regional level science exhibition as one of the judges when i arrived at the venue i saw all the other judges were males all the other judges were males i was the only women there right and uh, what uh, what sort of troubled me was not this that i was the only women and there was a comment that one of the fellows made and he said oh probably they have called you because they realize there is no women in the expert panel so now maybe he he didn't want to attack me maybe it was not a personal attack but this is where you know the mindset lies because you you don't treat a woman deserving enough to be there all you are thinking is that oh because there was no woman maybe they pulled her in so the message to the male colleagues the male mentors and is that bring me in not because i am a woman but for i am a professional who has given sweat blood and tears for making my own path and leading myself all the way through you want to bring me in bring me for all these reasons don't bring me because i am a woman okay i am better off doing my own work and leading my own path so that's the message that i would give and finally you can reach out to me at aditayugaljoshi@gmail.com or sanskriti foundation@gmail.com This is a picture from 2020 Science Day. So this was National Science Day 2020. The theme for National Science Day 2020 was women in science and when they asked me that what is my wish for women in science I gave these two phrases be fearless don't fear anything you will sail through it and be irreplaceable whatever you are whatever role you are playing you know whether you are a researcher whether you are a science communicator whether you are a science teacher whether you are a scientific assistant whatever role you are playing in the field of science be irreplaceable be a cutthroat professional there to the best of your abilities and skills so with that i'll sign off and i am happy to take questions 
Thank you, madam. Thank you for such an inspiring presentation. We have learned so many things from you, madam. The forum is now open to questions. Have I, stopped, have I stopped sharing my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Yeah. So I'm happy to interact with students. I hope I'm almost on time. I took a little bit longer. Sorry. No problem, ma'am. Is there any questions? I'll be happy to interact with students and faculties. Is there any questions from the participants? Yes, uh, yes, Amrit sir. Oh, Rashmi madam. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Uh, really overwhelmed to hear your uh, presentation, rather your talk, a uh, personal talk, uh, which I felt so. And uh, um, and in, I'm inspired too and uh, want to like to know some things like... Um, what if, uh, like you said, prioritize on your work and what about the unwanted and unthought things that come up to you on the beginning of the day when you have planned something and you are going, as you said, that you, you fall short uh, of time and then you feel guilty that I'm not able to complete my work on time. Yes, so those kind of scenarios will be there, Rashmi. I will. I have lots of stories, you know, I mean, this whole journey is full of stories. Uh, there was a time when I had a, a maid for my daughter and one day the maid suddenly ran off. She just left the job. And I had experiments with me. I had things coming up. I had nowhere to keep my daughter. My husband was away. There was a role of new mental support. Because that's why I said it's good to build up a support system. It's good to negotiate with people. Sometimes things are there that you just have to give it away. What you can do? You just have to sit at home for two days. The stress level is when you don't get that from the other party. So this is where uh, these types of problems will pop up. Sometimes you are delayed. You have to submit something, but you will be delayed because of unforeseen circumstances. So, yes, I'm not saying that, you know, a delay in time is okay. But there should not be delay in perfection. You delay, you, you delay your work because of those unfortunate circumstances, but, but do justice to it. And once you have established that problem with, with your your group, with your mentors, you will give you also you know that okay, it's going to come two days late. It's also about that rapport building. They know that. With women, you know, they can, they can come up at any point of time. Also, again, I said that uh, make your spouse a support system. If the maid has run away, your spouse can sit at home while you can be at home. So make those arrangements. Make it a very, you know, uh, normal. Yeah. So that that's up to you how you negotiate things out, and these kind of discussions have to be done early on. Not that you sort of, uh, not that you set up a system in place that no, only I will take leave, you will not take leave. I am a very very much in advocacy for uh, paternal leave for male colleagues also. Government is giving six months leave for female colleagues. They must also give three months leave for male colleagues, but they are not acknowledging. The policy acknowledges that women has to take care of child. Policy does not acknowledge that even males can take So, anyways, uh, some of my thoughts. Again, I would say that focus on delivery. Maybe it is two days. Don't focus on why you are not Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Any other question from the participants? I want some male, males to ask questions. Yes. <laughs> I want them to ask questions. What is their take on all this? You know, it's very important because they are, yes. they are they are the people who travel the path with us. They are very important. Madam, what will you suggest for MSc pass students? Oh, this is a career question. Who is this? Gopal. Gopal Roy, ma'am. Hold on. Huh? Okay. Let me ask. Huh? So what will you what will you suggest for MSc pass student? I think he's asking for a career suggestion. So there are multiple options. It all depends what you want to do. 
like after my msc i did two or three uh, you know jobs and i explored the field of research before taking up a career in research so uh, maybe uh, you can attend several internship you can attend some uh, you know online talks in different areas and explore where your inclination is and then decide about what you want to do even taking up a job to be independent because you know till now as you are dependent on your parents even taking up a job and learning at the job is is an option it will train you how to be an independent person right so you can start those kind of things also okay or you can write to me my email is there with amit sir you can write to me with specific sure, question respond gopal okay any anyone else somebody is asking what is your suggestions for a bsc chemistry student i mean if you like chemistry chemistry has a lot to offer why why not pursue chemistry and you know do good research if you don't want to get into research get into industry pharma industry has lot of scope for chemists so look for those kind of option what interest you if you love teaching get into teaching you know so uh, uh, if you think you are the best uh, chemistry teacher be the best so there are multiple number of options but it all depends upon where your interest is i would suggest don't take the course because it will take your job or it will you know it is uh, it many a times we see students they enter into msc with a with a plan that i will think two years what to do next if you want to think two years what to do while doing an msc then again you are not taking it serious right so so nowadays so many talks are there conferences are there webinars are there reach out to people talk to different kind of people talk about their career journeys and then you know, experience look for experiences as influence talk to your professors talk to your teachers how their work life is right so they can tell you how what are the demands of being a assistant professor or a associate professor if you want to get into teaching understand how a job looks like and then decide for yourself rather than you know blind eye you have a blind eye and just because everybody is doing a masters i will also do a masters maybe you are cut out for a different role uh, maybe you are a very good writer maybe after chemistry join a mass communication course and be a good scientific writer get hired by a news media channel the, the number of unlimited what skills you have see we have number of people having a msc in chemistry but that what skill you have is all that matters so focus on developing skills no in interest you and then degrees will happen by side okay yeah for students dr amrit please share my email id okay ma'am sure take these sure. career questions so these are career questions i want to hear uh, more about you know the theme which is women in science there is one question from rashmi madam yeah how much is it important to say no at different situation in a workplace okay rashmi good so again i will tell you a story from my own experience when i joined igib uh, the work culture here is 24 into 7 we did not even close during the covid time it's a covid testing center so uh, that was my initial few months of joining igib and shridhar would always keep a meeting at 5 o'clock in the evening normally women or even men would want to leave by 5 o'clock because you know it's already time for going home he would always keep a meeting at 5 o'clock the meeting would sometime run till 7 o'clock my house was very much away i would reach home by 8 8:30 with my four year son waiting for me so it happened for a couple of weeks and then then i decided that no it's not going to happen like this you know you can't be keeping meetings at the fag and the day i approached him and i told him he i am ready to work you know 24 into 7 when it is actually required but if you can shift the meeting to 3 pm my life becomes much more easy so i explained my problem and he took note of it he shifted the meeting to 3 pm but again if every day you go to your boss saying this happened that happened, and you are not delivering up to the mark then problem arises if you are delivering what you are 
expected to deliver all bosses are okay because they also need good people to work with them they need sincere people and that's why i have been always focusing on you know delivery delivery deliver it may be one day two day late but deliver what is expected out of you and then all the problems will be taken care of by your team by your supervisor because they need good people so that would be my answer you no know, you should not try to from negotiating you need negotiate if you need flexible working hours negotiate if you need to leave early on certain days negotiate it's always the key here anyone else any questions I don't think that they have any questions right now. Okay, I hope you all enjoy. Yes, ma'am. And actually, our speakers are so eloquent and mesmerizing that we do not want to let them go. It is always a great experience to listen to all of you. Thank you, madam, for enriching us in this way. Actually, your lecture was extremely inspiring to all of us. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Amrit, for having me. I thank all the patrons uh, who have made uh, this event, you know, uh, a success. And I also thank all the members of the organizing committee. I don't remember their names, but it's a very good, very good effort in place. And and I would like to see more women for participation in the organizing committee. And I would want to see a woman in the in, as one of the patrons as well. So that would yes. be the success of Global Breakfast series. So yes, ma'am. Definitely. Me, Definitely. All the best. All the best to everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I would like to thank Professor D. B. Prabhu, General Secretary ACT, Professor Brijesh Pare, President ACT, Professor Ashutosh Ghosh, Professor Shantanu Chakraborty, support and guidance. I also extend my gratitude to Dr. Shubhendu Maithi, Dr. Ramkrishna Pramanik, Dr. Bonkim Ghosh, Dr. Alokesh Hazari. Dr. Monohar Hussain Mondol, Professor Joyestri Shaduka, and Professor Shoikot Bandhupadhyay for their indefatigable spirit of the inspiration and sustenance. Last but not the least, my wishes of sincerest gratitude go out to Professor Volmer Madam and Dr. Joshi Madam for being kind enough to grace this occasion with their magnanimous presence and sharing with us their vast repertoire of knowledge. May I now? Dr. Alokesh Hazari uh, to deliver the vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Mitra. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A warm good afternoon to all of you. I, Dr. Alokesh Hazari, on behalf of my college, Government General Degree College, Singur, and the Department of Chemistry, am feeling honored to propose the vote of thanks on the event of this international webinar. First of all, I would like to give my heartfelt vote of thanks to the most distinguished speaker, Professor T.R. Volmar and Dr. Adita Joshi, for delivering an excellent presentation and making this social webinar a very meaningful and interesting and also inspiring life story. I would like to express our deep gratitude to all the respected patrons, Professor Asutosh Ghosh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Rani Rasmuni Green University, Professor D. V. Prabhu, General Secretary, ACT, Professor Brijesh Pare, President, ACT, and Professor Santonu Chakraborty, Principal, DGDC Singur. I also want to thank all the advisory committee members, Dr. Choitali Choudhury, IQAC Coordinator Ma'am, GGDC Shingur, Dr. Shubhendu Maiti and Dr. Ramkrishna Pramanik, Associate Professor, GGDC Shingur, for their guidance and their moral support. I specifically would like to thank the event coordinator, Dr. A.K. Mitro, and the organizing committee members, Dr. B.C. Ghosh, and Dr. M.H. Mondol and Professor J. Saduka, DGDC Singur, for their kind help to make this webinar a great success. I also extend thanks to all the participants, especially the teachers, 
of our college and the teachers of the other institutions for their modest cooperation. Finally, I thank all the beloved students, not only from our college, but also from other institutions. Once again, I thank all of you for your cordial cooperation. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Mitra. Thank you, Dr. Aloki Shazari, uh, for your kind vote of thanks. May I now request Professor Joystri Shaduka to deliver the vote of thanks and conclude this event. Over to you, madam. Yes, ma'am. I am privileged to be a part of organizing today's webinar on Global Women's Breakfast for Empowering Diversity in Science on Virtual Platform, organized by Government General Degree College, Shingur Hugli, Association of Science Teachers, care of Humi Bhabha Center for Science Education, TIFR Mumbai, in collaboration with Rani Rashmuri Green University, Tarakeshwar Hubli, in association with IUPSC. I would like to thank you all, to all the participants, to uh, our chief patrons, to our distinguished speakers, our event coordinator, our advisory board members, and our organizing committee members. First, I would like to thank my uh, heartfelt gratitude to our distinguished speakers. Our first speaker was Professor Valmar, she has encouraged, she, she has given encouraging lecture on Jenny, a new topic, a totally new topic. And now I would like to thank Dr. Adita Joshi, Madam, for encouraging women's in science from the very basic core. I would like to uh, thank Dr. Shantanu Chakraborty, Principal, Government General Degree College, Shingur, Professor Ashutosh Ghosh, Vice Chancellor, Rai Rashmuni Green University, Professor D.P. Prabhu, General Secretary, ACT, care of Humi Baba Center for Science Education, TIFR, and Professor Brijesh Pare, President, ACT, care of HBCAC, TIFR. I would like to specially thank event coordinator, Dr. Amrit Krishnamitra, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Government General Degree College, Shingu, Member of Executive Council, Association of Chemistry Teachers for organizing this webinar in such a nice fashion. I, on behalf of uh, organizing committee members, I would like to thank advisory board members, Dr. Choitani Choudhury, IQAC coordinator, GGG Sushingu, Dr. Shubhendu Maiti, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, GGG Sushingu, and Dr. Ramkrishna Pramani, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, GGG Sushingu. And all the organizing committee members, apart from me, Dr. Bunkin Chandra Ghosh, Dr. Alukesh Hajari, and Dr. Munhar Hushel Mondol, Department of Chemistry. Last but not the least, it is the enthusiasm of participants that made this webinar a grand success. So, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all.